Welcome to Any Way You Slice It, where we talk about your identity and purpose in the kingdom of God. Come join author Ricardo Richardson as we slice our way to the core of God's Word to experience the beautiful and transformational discovery of who we are and why we exist, no matter how we slice it. Today's message is Testify. Beloved family, our text says, But remember the Lord your God, for it is He who gives you the ability to produce wealth, and so confirms His covenant, which He swore to your ancestors, as it is today. If you ever forget the Lord your God, and follow other gods, and worship, and bow down to them, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Deuteronomy 8, 18 and 19. Go into many churches on any given Sunday and you may hear the statement, I come to testify about the goodness of the Lord. And religion on cue encourages us to reserve the church walls as a place to testify. We make it a religious experience and not what it is meant to be, a legal kingdom one. But go into any court of law any day of the week and you will hear everyone who gets on the stand doing what? Testifying. Why? Because that is what a witness does. The witness is called to the stand in the court of law to testify to give a testimony about situations relevant to the case. Listen, religion has done a number on the world today. It takes kingdom principles and makes them religious doctrine. That is a dangerous spirit in the earth. Let's uncover some truth about a court. You have the judge who rules over the case. You have the general counsel who represents the defendant. You have the prosecutor who represents the plaintiff or the one with the complaints, charges, or accusations. And all of them, especially attorneys, are there to not just talk to the judge, but pray to the judge. My, 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 religion got our mindset all messed up. But I've come to testify to you today that religion is a lie. And the kingdom of God and its Messiah, which means anointed king, is the truth. Listen, the Bible is the complete constitution of the kingdom of God that contains accounts of all the people of God, the enemies of God, the children of God, and the great works of God. We call them the Old and New Testament. Even that word is not a religious word. Okay, I have to break it down for us. The word testament is defined as, quote, a person's will, especially the part relating to personal property, end quote. I sense your mind is beginning to understand. Our glorious King Jesus is the Lord of Lords. Lord means owner. So God is the owner of owners. And the Bible is his will, Old and New Testament. For King Jesus says, I am the word of God, John 1, 1, made flesh. So that means whatever the Father says, I am, therefore I do. In other words, Jesus is the Father's thoughts spoken as words in action. He is the verb of God. In John 5, 19, we see this truth. Jesus gave them this answer. I tell you the truth. The son can do nothing by himself. He can do only what he sees his father doing. Because whatever the father does, the son also does. He came into this life to do the will of his father and not his own will. He continually will testify even before he died to redeem us. Not my will, but the will of him who sent me that I must do. Today, I have come as an ambassador of my King Jesus to cancel all those false religious thoughts we grew up with and still hearing today. We have to repent. And so you know, this is the idea behind the judgment in the court of law. Yes, 
if the one who has been found guilty shows remorse and repents, confesses to the judge. Another word religion stole from the kingdom. If he confesses his sin and guilt before the judge, his sentence will be lenient. But if the judge believes that he is not remorseful or does not accept responsibility for his crimes, he will judge him most severely. Repentance is a kingdom word. It simply means change one's mindset or thinking. To turn away from the lies of the world and religion and embrace the truth of God. Okay, let me show you that your test is for a testimony recorded as a testament relating to your real life case. In our opening text, we see that Moses testified. He says, remember the Lord your God, for it is he that gives you the power to get wealth. But if you forget him, I testify against you today that you will surely be destroyed. Moses can testify because God demonstrated his destructive power to Pharaoh and the Egyptians when he led his children out in the Exodus. In Job we read, your own mouth condemns you, not mine. Your own lips testify against you. Job 15, 6. It is what we confess or say with our own lips that reveal what we believe in our hearts. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Our words are the testimony of our lips. If we serve God or not, if we live in faith or not, it's about our testament. King David says, Hear, O my people, and I will speak. O Israel, and I will testify against you. I am God, even thy God. Psalm 57. And when we move from the Old Testament to the New Testament, we still see people testifying. Ah, oh, listen, even the rich man who died after living a life full of wealth wouldn't give poor Lazarus any relief. He said, Father Abraham, have pity on me and send Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue because I am in agony in this fire. But Abraham replied, Son, remember that in your lifetime you received your good things, while Lazarus received bad things. But now he is comforted here, and you are in agony. So the rich man replies, Don't miss this, y'all, for we cannot testify of what we do not know. But he says, please, I beg you, Father Abraham, send Lazarus to my family, for I have five brothers, that he may testify unto them, lest they also come into this place of torment. Luke 16, 28. Oh, you're not convinced yet? For King Jesus says, truly, truly, I say unto you, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and ye receive not our witness john 3 11. i just told you your testimony has to be what you've seen and you know and it has to be confirmed by other witnesses who can testify to the truth ah oh, family this seed is so good today let us sink deep down into the soil of your hearts our lord king jesus testified the world cannot hate you, he says, but it hates me because I testify that its works are evil. John 7, 7. And finally, he says, when the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me. And you also must testify for you have been with me from the beginning. John 15, 26 to 27. Listen, family, those who believe in Christ, let's all take the stand, be a witness, and testify. Much love.